Harry's Wife, Part 92.59. Here comes the TIG. Now, if you were thinking, here comes funding freedom finding dollars, you'd be mistaken, because, at the moment, any further provision of that parody is paused until you get over the like threshold. So if you haven't done so already, you're going to have to go back to the last episode and give it a like if you want to hear more. Otherwise, your glorious narrator will just focus on other things. You have been instructed. Now, back to Harry's wife. Here comes the TIG. Ah, yes, the TIG. We've had little snippets of that referred to in my parody of Funding Freedom and Finding Dollars, where basically Harry's wife held herself out as some second-rate, well, probably actually seventh-rate, Gwyneth Paltrow, attempting to believe that she was effortlessly stylish, on trend, able to advocate little things in terms of matters appertaining to cookery, to fashion, or as it's now known, for Sean. And all done, of course, because she believes in her own deluded little world bubble, that she is the pinnacle of style, that she is the height of fashion, that anything that is on trend, she knows about. She created that blog, although I understand that it was rumoured that somebody else would write for her, in order, of course, although she didn't realise this, to pursue the prime aims. It would enable her to assert control over those that were stupid enough to read it, it would enable her to draw fuel from those that responded to it. It maintained a facade of her being a fashion icon and, of course, a be generally being a pleasant and interesting person. It, of course, allowed for the residual benefit of merch and money. And it appears, according to the Mail Online, with an article by Charlotte Griffiths and Caroline Graham, who ask, Is Harry's wife set to relaunch her lifestyle blog, The Tig? Duchess seeks to reactivate the trademark for her passion project. <sighs> now, I've always understood the TIG to stand for totally incomprehensible garbage. And let's see if that remains the case as we dive in to the article. Although it's claimed, of course, that it was named after Tiganello wine, I think the initials are better used in the way that I have suggested. It was once filled with her favourite recipes, candid holiday snaps, inspirational words of wisdom, and gushing eulogies to her parents. Oh, how that has changed. Doria has disappeared, and we all know what she thinks of Thomas Markle Sr., don't we? When Harry's wife closed down her lifestyle blog, The Tig, in April 2017, before announcing her engagement to... Prince Harry later that year, she described it as a passion project that evolved into an amazing community of inspiration, support, fun and frivolity. Well, of course it would be amazing. She was involved in it. Now, the Duchess of Sussex has applied to reactivate the TIG trademark name, a move likely to raise hope among her fans that she might one day consider bringing her blog back to life. Publicly available records in America show Los Angeles lawyer Marjorie Witter, I beg your pardon, Marjorie Witter Norman, filed a new application to trademark the name in July last year. Harry's wife launched a blog in 2014 when she was an actress in the legal drama Suits. Was she? That's never been mentioned before. And named the site after her favourite Tigna Tignanello wine. Hmm. Recalling her first sip, she wrote, It was an aha moment at its finest. For me, it became a TIG moment, a moment of getting it. Well, you've certainly got it a fair few times after that, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Ms. Witter Norman filed the trademark application under a Delaware-based holding company called Frimfram Incorporated, which links back to the Duchess's business manager, Andrew Mayer. A similar application filed in 2019 would have expired last year. At the time, her representative said... The lasting trademark is to prevent false branding, to avoid others purporting to be the Duchess or affiliated with her. Why on earth would anybody want to be affiliated with this car crash? Hmm? And why would anybody purport to be her? That, of course, is paranoia and grandiosity. 
Harry's wife used the original TIG website, parts of which can still be found online, to share her views on everything from feminism to her passion for philanthropy. In an article entitled The Birthday Suit, she discussed body confidence, with a photo of herself appearing to pose nude. She often praised her mother Doria Ragland, assertion of control through a benign method, a yoga therapist who was the only member of her family at her wedding, and Father Thomas Markle, from whom she remains estranged, assertion of control by keeping him on the shelf, remaining in a position of withdrawal. An avid foodie, she also shared recipes and interviews with friends including tennis star Serena Williams and actress Priyanka Chopra. Should she ever relaunch the blog or start a new one, it could be worth a fortune through partnerships with fashion, food and beauty brands, according to a Hollywood marketing expert. Hmm. So what's behind doing this? Surely she's too busy being mother to her two children, wife to her husband. Surely she's too busy, for instance, doling, rolling out the 40 by 40 initiative. I'm sure that's taking up a lot of time and is doing many good things around the world. She's also probably very busy continuing to support the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. And undoubtedly, she's probably working very hard behind the scenes to ensure that parental leave is achieved, obtained for those in the United States. Doubtless, she's also extremely busy with all the various charity work that she undertakes. And I imagine as well that she's really industrious with the creation of Pearl for Netflix and, of course, is no doubt sat down at this very moment creating podcasts for Spotify. Yes. So given that she must be doing all of those things, that she's so busy with all of those other matters, why is there the possibility that the TIG will come back? Well, of course... It's a means of assertion of control. It's her mouthpiece. It's her organ. And therefore, she can assert control over people with writing what she writes. It enables her to receive fuel by way of the reaction of the people that read it and respond to it. It helps with the maintenance of the facade to create this image of her being a fashion icon, that she's stylish, interested in food, kind-hearted, interesting, that she is of the moment, and what she has to say people really need to have regard to because she is so fascinating. In a sense, one suspects that she's trying to outgun Gwyneth with her Goop brand. Naturally driven by envy, and the presence of Gwyneth Potro is a threat to her control, and therefore her narcissism will drive her to try and compete in that way. One of the biggest things, of course, that will come from this is that it is an opportunity to go maximum merch and obtain various freebies and so forth by virtue of the fact that she's now the Duchess of Sussex and that she will leverage that residual benefit, her title, to achieve more residual benefits in terms of money. And it's quite clear that that is a major driving factor. But as always, she doesn't know all of this. She will just think... Well, now I'm free from the shackles of the oppressive regime of the Windsors. I'm allowed to restart my lifestyle blog. And because I am stylish and a fashion icon and cook extraordinaire and with my finger on the pulse of anything trendy and of the moment, I can detail all of this and share it now because I'm unshackled. Yes, she'll recognise as an opportunity to make some money, but she doesn't realise that all of this is being done for the prime aims. But of course, it is. It's just a further example, of course, that she's, in a strange kind of way, going full circle, returning to the thing that she did before she joined the royal family. And is it perhaps that she has to fall back on this because she's done the square root of fuck all for Netflix? Similarly, has done diddly squat for Spotify. Could it be that the 4040 initiative has got absolutely fucking nowhere? Might it be that parental leave has fallen by the wayside? Could it be the charity activity is not reaping the dividends that she thought it was, and therefore her narcissism isn't directing it to her? And therefore, all of those things are being jettisoned, exhibiting with certain narcissists the failure to stick at projects, which is an exhibition of the lack of accountability. You may well have seen that with the narcissist you were involved with, the inability to complete things, finish a job, stick at a task, see a project through, because there is no sense of accountability. If the narcissism directs that the narcissist go in a different direction, he or she will, because there's no sense of obligation, no sense of accountability, and no emotional empathy for the individuals affected by the failure to deliver in 
walking away from the relevant project. And therefore, the suggestion that she returns to the TIG is, of course, all about the prime aims, and we will keep an eye out to see if it actually happens. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>